Hi, my name is James Swenson. I'm an associate professor of art history and the history of photography here at Brigham Young University, and I'm the guest curator for this exhibition. Um, today I'm going to talk about two of my favorite photographs. I have a lot of them. I've been working with this collection now for more than 20 years. Um, it actually all started with an ORCA grant, an undergraduate grant that I received here years and years ago and has developed into several projects. And so I'm very pleased and, and happy to have this exhibition up um, finally here at the Museum of Art at BYU. As I said, I'm gonna talk about two of my favorite photographs. The first is this one here. By 1940, the Germans were already harassing their Jewish populations. And so there was a real question of what to do with minority groups, not just in Europe, but also in the United States. And there was a real interest in the federal government in understanding its multiple moving parts. One of the ways in which this was done was through photography. In 1935, the Farm Security Administration and the Resettlement Administration instituted what was called the Historical Section, in which they sent great photographers all across the United States um, photographing the projects of this New Deal agency, as well as taking the opportunity to photograph and create a real portrait of the United States. One of the photographers was Russell Lee, who in 1940 came out to Utah. And Russell Lee was very interested in photographing everything. In fact, um, it's uh, kind of joked that there was nothing he didn't like to photograph. And in 1940, he not only worked in northern Utah, but also came down to southern Utah um, later in the fall and worked in Santa Clara. And there, he encountered several of the old residents of Santa Clara, including Barbara Strahili Graff, who you see in this photograph. He took several photographs of Barbara on that day, especially in and around her tiny little home, which was actually an old mining hut that was dragged out from Silver Reef. Um, the best photograph, though, is this one. Russell Lee was big, but he was kind, he was generous, and gained the trust of those he photographed. And so here we see him in Barbara's home. He also was very good at using a flash. Uh, and so here you see Barbara photographed in her one room home with the portraits of some of her family members, including her husband, John Henry, who had passed away years earlier, um, her parents, actually her father and stepmother, as well as another family, and a poem um, a bright above her head that praises her, or that praises motherhood in general. What I really like about this photograph is the inclusion of Barbara, though, and, and almost cut off at the very bottom. Here she is wearing her canning apron. It's later in the season, um, and she'd been canning. And here we see her, though, connected to her family, connected to her husband, her family members, in this constellation of those that meant something to her. Barbara, at this point, was 79 years old. She was born, actually the first um, immigrant child born in the Swiss community. Um, she was saved uh, from a flash, flash flood as a baby by Jacob Hamlin. And so she had spent much of her life in this community and was part of the community. And by photographing her with her family in this small home, on, in this really tight-knit community, um, Russell Lee does a fantastic job in showing what matters about these places, in showing, again, um, what Mormon communities were like, and um, a community that mattered in the general fabric of what the United States was. Now, there are several photographs in this collection that I would like to talk about. Um, as I said, I've been working with these photographs for a very long time, but the one I've decided to choose um, is this one. Um, as the title of this exhibition suggests, this exhibition is not just about labor and coming out of the Great Depression, but it's also about recovery. And the key part of the recovery was the uh, buildup towards World War II. Um, by the time this photograph was made, the United States, even though it had not yet entered the war, was already fully participating in supplying munitions and other things for the Allies. Um, and you can imagine, uh, modern war requires a lot of material. Bingham Canyon, um, located just outside of Salt Lake City, you know, just to the south and a little bit to the west of Salt Lake City, was one of the most important copper mines on Earth. In fact, it was one of the largest copper mines on Earth, um, producing more than 200,000 tons of copper ore a year, which was important because for an average tank, you needed about 1,000 tons of copper, and to build a battleship required about 100,000 tons of copper, which is a tremendous amount, as you can imagine. And so the importance of places like Bingham, right, and other mines and other facilities all across the United States were essential for the war effort. In order to document the effort, the Office of War Information sent out a number of great photographers. One of my favorite and one of the best was Andreas Feiniger. Feiniger was born in Germany 
His father was the great Cubist Lionel Feiniger, and his mother, right, uh, Julia, was a, is a German Jew. And he was born into an artistic family. He studied at the Bauhaus. He studied to be a cabinet maker. Later, he studied to be an architect with Le Corbusier um, and actually worked at, as an architect. But during his time at the Bauhaus, this important experimental um, school, he was exposed to photography, thanks in large part to people like Laszlo Mahali Naj, and his father, the painter, was also very interested. Um, eventually, Andreas Feiniger decides that this is going to be his career, and he's going to take all the experimental ideas that were in Germany at the time and in the Bauhaus, ideas of new vision and constructivism and modernism, and he's going to bring, make that a central part of his photography. When war started in Europe, Andreas, um, who, as I said, was Jewish, um, needed to get out. And so eventually he makes his way to the United States. He had never been to the United States before, even though he was also an American citizen through his father. He comes to the United States, and he, like many other artists, wanted to participate. They wanted to be part of the war effort. Andreas knew exactly um, what Germany was like and what the Nazis were doing. And so he wanted to participate. He was uh, unfit for service, but then he decided to use his photography to help. So he was sent by the war Office of War Information to plants and factories all across the United States. And in one very important trip, he comes out west where he photographs all sorts of things, lead mines, uh, mercury mines, and he makes his way to Bingham Canyon. Um, here in Bingham Canyon, you can see though, all those ideas, all those experimental ways of making an image are coming into play. In this, probably my favorite, in which he photographs in both black and white and color, he shows right, the massive scale of Bingham, of Bingham Copper Mine, which by this point, as I said, was not only one of the world's biggest, but it was one of the world's most important. Um, by the time Andreas comes here, um, Bingham is producing one-third of the copper used by the Allies in the war. And yet, if you look at this photograph, you can see how the size, how the scale, how the forms of Bingham Canyon um, influenced and inspired Andreas Feiniger to make very interesting photographs. Yes, he had to document the process of pulling ore out of the earth, right, bringing copper out, and then processing it, and he goes through every step of the process. But along the way, uh, you can also see how he was very influenced by just the forms, by the color, right? By all the things an artist would see in a place like Bingham Canyon. And here we have the G Bridge, right? The Car Fork Bridge. These are lo no longer in existence because the size continues to grow at Bingham, which is now called Kennecott Copper Mine. Um, and yet, at this point, you can see through the shadows and just through the massive size. What a, what a mine looks like, a mine that is producing so much ore, but at the same time doing it through a sublime, actually almost an industrial sublime um, way. Um, and clearly, Andreas Feiniger loved these forms. There are others, but this one's my favorite. 